Hey everybody and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This particular video will have multiple parts and is going to focus on confidence intervals, sampling distributions, margins of error, and sample sizes. In our first example, we're going to look at how to calculate a 95% confidence interval around a sample mean that we've collected. And this is kind of a good slide to show that because if we grab a large sample, we can find the mean of that sample, and that would be right around here. And then we can figure out what our margin of error might be. And if we subtract that margin of error from our mean, and we also add that margin of error from our mean, we'll kind of get a large confidence interval. And depending on the type of formula we use, we can force ourselves to have a 95% confidence interval around our mean. And that tells us that we're about 95% confident that our sample mean represents the actual population mean. Or another way of saying that is we feel that we have a 95% chance that our population mean actually occurs somewhere in this interval near our sample mean. So let's see an example of this. Suppose we have 5,100 statistics students. And these students show a mean time required to graduate with a combined bachelor and master's degree of 5.12 years with a standard deviation of 1.71 years. So if we look at what we have so far, we have a very large sample of statistics students. We have 5,100 students. That's a big sample. We know that the time it takes them to get a combined degree called the bachelor's master's is about 5.12 years and the standard deviation is 1.71 years. Now the question is, can we estimate the mean time required to graduate with this type of degree for all statistics students, not just our 5100 which is our sample, but can we use this information to estimate how long it will take to get a BAMS degree for all statistics students. Now in general, and for very large sample sizes, the mean of our sample is the best estimate that we have for our population mean. If you imagine that we continuously take samples and calculate the mean, then the average of all those sample means will come very, very close to the true population mean. But in this example, we have only one sample. And so if we're asked to give our best estimate of the population mean, our best estimate is in fact the sample mean. So our best estimate given only this information is that the average time it'll take statistics students to graduate with this BAMS degree is 5.12 years. Now suppose we wanted to create a confidence interval around that value. Suppose we wanted to find the 95% confidence interval for the mean time required to get that BAMS degree. Well, there's two steps we need to take to figure out this confidence interval. The first thing we need to do is we need to calculate that margin of error, or E. And that little squiggly just means approximate, because what we have here is an approximate formula for our margin of error. Now let's look back a second. Remember the margin of error was the interval around our sample mean. We're pretty sure our sample mean is close to the population mean within this given error range. When we subtract the error, we get the lower bound. When we add this margin of error, we get the upper bound. This entire range should contain the population mean 95% of the time. And that's what a 95% confidence interval represents. So how do we calculate this margin of error? We can use this estimated formula, which is 2 times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size n. Again, s represents the sample standard deviation. So with our estimate formula here, we can estimate our error. So we have two times the sample standard deviation, which in our case is 1.71, so we plug that in here, divided by the square root 
of the size of our sample, which is 5,100. When we calculate this out, we discover that our margin of error is about 0 0.048, which can be rounded up to 0 0.05. Again, the type of rounding that you're going to do will depend on the application of your problem and what is requested of you. So in order to complete our confidence interval, we're going to take our sample mean and we're going to add on our margin of error to get the upper bound, and then we're going to subtract the margin of error from our sample mean to get the lower bound. And so finally, that tells us that our 95% confidence interval around our population mean is between 5.07 and 5.17. And this mu represents the population mean. So this is our 95% confidence interval. All right, let's do a second example. I want to make a quick note before we move on that we're using a quick estimation method. In other words, we're using a formula for our margin of error that is two times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. This estimate will give you a very, very close estimate of the margin of error. However, I want to make sure that people do realize that the exact formula for the margin of error depends on a number of factors. When we don't know anything about the population standard deviation or variance, we would actually calculate the margin of error by finding the critical value for our t, for two-tailed t, multiplying that by the standard deviation of the sample, and dividing by the square root of n. This formula is very similar to the estimated formula we're using and works very well because with large sample sizes, and our samples are very big, the t critical value is about 1.98. 1.98, and that's really close to 2. So that's where this estimated formula comes from. It comes from the actual formula, but because the critical value is nearly 2, we just use a 2 to keep it simple. So you'll notice in all of our formulas in this particular how-to video set, we're going to use a 2 as our estimate. All right. Suppose we want to find a confidence interval for a proportion rather than for a mean. All right, well, a proportion is like a percentage. So in this particular question, suppose we have a sample of 10,000 people, and we've shown that 2,100 of those people, which comes out to be 21%, actually prefer vanilla over chocolate. I know it's shocking to me as well, but it is possible. Now, what is the 95% confidence interval for the population proportion of all the people that prefer vanilla to chocolate? So what's going on here is we have a sample. It's a really huge sample. And out of our sample, we know that our sample proportion is 21% or 0.21. Because 2,100, and if we divide 2,100 by 10,000, we will get 21%, which is the same as 0.21, and that's what we've done here. So our sample proportion, p hat, it's often called, is 0.21. The question is, can we build a confidence interval to show us what the population proportion is, to get an estimate of that? So to find the 95% confidence interval, we first again need to calculate the margin of error. Again, we're going to use the quick formula. We're going to have a 2 here. Our margin of error is 2 times the square root of all these goodies. First, we need our population proportion. Then we're going to multiply that by 1 minus our population proportion. We're going to divide that by n. Then we're going to take the square root of this entire value and multiply it by 2. So here, our population proportion is 0.21. So we've got our 0.21 plugged in right here. 1 minus 0.21 is 0.79. So that's where that number comes from. Here's dividing by our sample size n. And once we do this multiplication and this division, we take the square root of that result and multiply it by 2. And that gives us 0 0.0081.
That's our margin of error. Remember, that's what we just calculated. To find the 95% confidence interval, we're going to both add and subtract that margin of error from our sample proportion. So our sample proportion was 0.21. We're going to add on 0 0.0081, and we're going to subtract 0 0.0081. And that's going to give us a population proportion between 0 0.202 and 0 0.218. This is our 95% confidence interval for the population proportion. All right, that's the end of part one, and I'm going to go ahead and start up and do part two.